it's easier. Uh, he's been dangling there for, well, he's been opaque or clear for a little while. Would you, Jacob, get a towel and put right there? You, just, just a kitchen towel will work in case he falls. I don't know, I don't know what he does when he comes out of here. We've been expecting him all day. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, he's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look at him. Look, oh my gosh. See his proboscis? Oh, he's perfect. Oh, he's perfect. You're not underneath him, honey. Do you want me to try to put him on here? No, no, he, crawl, he crawls up. He wants to hang upside down. Just okay. make sure that he's not gonna fall. Sorry that he keeps going in and out of focus. I think that's related to the fact that he's spinning. Oh my goodness. Would it help if the lights were off? Try it. No, well, that may help. Look at that. Oh my gracious. This is awesome. This is awesome. Look at his pretty spots. Look at his pretty spots. He's out in the world for the first time. I wonder if he has any memory of life as a caterpillar. I'm guessing no. Jacob tells me I anthropomorphize too much that they don't think at all, but you can see his bottom part is the shape that the chrysalis was. Uh, when he spins back around here, maybe you'll see it. Go ahead and turn the light back on, I think. Come on, little fella. Why are you out of focus? Why are you out of focus? Let's try it down here for a second. And let's go back. I'm gonna walk around to the other side and see what we can see over there. No, it's okay if you're in there. I don't understand why it's not in focus. It was a moment ago. Mom's making special requests. She says, hold that up behind it, that'll help, it, help them see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pull it so it, it's not blocking that. A little more. Here, hon, pull it this way. I'm, I, can that, okay, that doesn't seem to be... There. This is the first one, Joan. The first one that I've seen. Now, three hatched while we were on vacation, and my co-workers took very good care of them. But this is the first one that's hatched out in my presence. And I believe it is a male. Uh... The female has a lot more black things uh, in her bot the bottom parts of her wings 
I'll investigate that. I'm sure you're all dying to know what kind of genitals this thing has, but. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. Marvelous. So he's going to hang there for a while, and he's going to probably crawl up on this wire that we've got for him. And he'll have to hang for several hours. Some things on the internet say six to eight hours. Uh, Aunt Patty says four, uh, 24 hours. I've heard some people say they keep him for 48 hours. So we're gonna have to be mindful of that. He has, his wings have to dry. See how kind of puffy they are? I don't know if you can tell that or not. Let's go back to the other side. I feel like staring out the window doesn't help. There, how's that? That's a good angle. Can you imagine his little wings being all folded up in that pod? Oh goodness, goodness gracious. Hey Jacob. I'm busy. Jacob's busy. See if I can put this on autopilot for just a second. See if you can see him right there. I'm gonna go shut off the air conditioning vent so that it won't blow and spin it around. Now he can dangle in peace. Yeah, I mean, he just, once he decided, this is in response to my mom's question, once he decided to pop out, it didn't take him long. Just, I was on the phone with my mom and dad, and all of a sudden a split appeared in the side of his chrysalis, and that was that. He just came right on out. Isn't that remarkable? Look how pretty his little spots are. One way that you can tell the difference between moths and butterflies, by the way, if you look at his antenna, you see how they're straight and have little sort of bulbs at the end. A uh, moth will have feathery antennas uh, so they're not smooth like this little fellas there's some other differences as well he's really moving his little proboscis around trying to get trying to make sure that that mouth will work they don't need to eat for the first several hours after they come out they've still had uh, They've still had plenty to eat in their little, or not eat really, I guess, but they've had plenty of nourishment in the pouch. It's kind of like a baby with a uh, umbilical cord. But once he starts to get pretty dry, he's going to need 
some nectar or let's say if he gets dry and gets restless in the nighttime you don't want to release them at night because uh, they're more predators at night and they could get confused and so forth uh, so if he gets ready to go in the nighttime then what you can do is make a solution of honey and water and I think the I think the uh, ratio is are nine parts water to one part honey though I would have to look to be sure in any event you soak a cotton ball or a piece of cotton with that solution and he'll just stick out his little long little tongue and eat that sugar water until he can go outside in the daytime and eat something. Now better. connected to Jacob's S6. That was Siri, or not Siri, Alexa. Now can you believe that just exactly 10 days ago that was a caterpillar? Exactly 10 days ago, that was a caterpillar. And this is one actually that I found in the garden uh, already with its chrysalis formed on the underside of a milkweed. And I didn't think that was very safe with all the things out there. And so I clipped the little stem that he was on and brought him home and have been guarding him along with Jacob and Jojo who's a great guard dog for insects uh, for the last 10 days Here's something else that's remarkable. This thing is in St. Louis, Missouri right now on the banks of the Mississippi River. And in the next six to eight weeks, he will be up in a tree high on an elevated uh, mountain, obviously below the snow line, below the yeah, below the snow line but they go on an elevated uh, mountain range and nest in the trees with literally thousands or or millions of other ones of these and they can't of course count them one by one so they measure them by the size of their swarm they swarm together uh, for warmth in the winter time and huddle all together and they just make a blanket of monarchs. What do you think, Jacob? Mm-hmm. Jacob actually complimented me on he said I needed to do something better with the chrysalises than just have them hanging over the kitchen table, which he was probably right about. So I've taken a piece of picture wire and put between our two light, uh, lamps and then I've taken uh, Christmas, Christmas tree hooks, Christmas ornament hooks and suspended the chrysalises with thread. Boy he seems content doesn't he? Can you see how his wings are spreading out, getting straighter, getting lighter in color as they start to dry. Another uh, reason that it's good to take care of them inside or in some kind of a habitat is that right now he cannot fly he has no way to escape other than I guess he could try to run but he probably wouldn't know that so he's extremely vulnerable to uh, prey 
right now. Yeah. He's extremely vulnerable to prey. But he's not going to get any prey. Well, predators here. Uh, because I'm here. Can you see the roundness of what will be his sort of under wing or hind wing? See, it's rounded, and then the more pointed wing is his top front wing. They have special names. I don't remember them. Jamie, the way that I can tell, the way that I believe I can tell, oh, goodness, is that... Uh, the female has more of the black veins on her hind wing than this one does. If you, maybe after this chat, I can look up a picture of the two side by side and post them both. One thing that's great for this little guy is instead of just mating living for two weeks and then dying he gets to live for about eight months what will happen as we as i've said he'll fly down to mexico uh, it's kind of remarkable they don't go straight south they start up north all along the uh well in canada but all the way from the Rocky Mountains to the East Coast. Fly south and depending on where they are, either easterly or westerly. And they all sort of converge in Texas. And of course by that time there are enough of them that you don't just see one or two or even 50 fluttering over. I mean, it's just a giant swarm of monarchs. Anyway, he will, be part of that migration stream and he will winter in Mexico and there are people down there who have it's really neat if you look it up on the internet there are entire uh, festivals dedicated to these uh, animals that I think date back to I don't know about the Aztecs but pre-Christian and pre uh, pre-Spanish influence and they celebrate the uh, monarch the return of the monarch as a sign of blessing and they put out little offerings to it and uh, have big festivals in the street and they eat and they sell little replicas of monarchs and it's a big deal uh, so he's wintering down there with the people who love him, the people who are having a festival in his honor, which would be great, I think. Would love to have a festival in my honor. Uh, and then in spring, when it gets to be time, he won't hibernate down there, by the way. He'll be in a, at least a semi-wakeful state, although they hold pretty still. I don't think they do a lot of eating. And then when it gets to be spring, according to the movement of the sun uh, can you turn off your Alexa because I'm hearing myself in the Jacob's got mm -hmm. his phone connected to Alexa and then he's watching me on the live stream there we got it fixed anyway according to the movement of the sun he will know that it's spring as will his peers and they'll begin their flight north they will move back across the Rio Grande, or I guess along the edge of the Gulf, to Texas. They will lay their first clutch of eggs after mating there in Texas, then he will die. So I guess that's the downside for this fella. He gets to live eight months, but he has to spend eternity buried in Texas, which I would not want to do. Although I could be persuaded probably if 
the bargain involved somebody throwing me a festival. Oh. See how he sticks his little butt? If you remember from science class long ago when you were still in high school, insects of this kind have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And so what we're seeing him stick between the wings from time to time is his little abdomen. We went to the butterfly house in West County yesterday. That was pretty neat. Uh, of course, they don't have monarchs that they harbor there because the monarchs are a migratory species and they want to encourage that. But they have a whole building full of tropical plants and tropical butterflies that just fly around and I guess they could alight on you or flutter past your face. It's really interesting. Uh, my sister and my nephew Lincoln well, and I suppose my brother-in-law, Adam, as well. Because they're a family. Uh, are harboring the swallowtail butterflies uh, that we found as caterpillars. And they have not started to come out yet. But the reason they are called swallowtail is down... I don't know if you can see my finger. Yeah, never mind, we won't do that tailing behind the wings of the swallowtail are two little I don't know what you would call them tails I guess that look like the swallow bird if you've ever seen a swallow it's got little long swoopy tail but the monarch of course doesn't have that one of the reasons we're fascinated by the monarch and so concerned about its well-being is that it's one of the most uh, mysterious migratory patterns that we see in an insect species like this. We don't know just exactly how they know where to go. We don't know just exactly when they know they need to go how far south they get before they reproduce or how far north they get in the spring. I mean, what tells them, okay, this is as far as we're going, let's mate and, and let go. So scientists are still studying this. And of course, we're all alarmed. The loss of habitat, the use of pesticides, uh, a number of things have contributed to a really alarming drop in the number of monarchs that they're seeing, particularly where they nest in Mexico every year. Well, he just kicked off something. What did he kick off, Jay? Uh, Some people who are really, really into this buy uh, stickers that have serial numbers on them and they place the sticker on the hind wing. Supposedly it's light enough that it doesn't harm the monarch or uh, impede his flight in any way. And then they report the number to an organization and then if that butterfly is spotted in Mexico or if he is recovered when he comes and dies next spring someone will log where he was found log that number and by that method they try to get a little better idea of the migratory patterns I thought that was both a little too much work and just not great I mean these guys only get to live eight months and who the hell wants a sticker on you for eight months that you can't get rid of. We don't have any idea whether it impedes their flight or not, and I imagine it can't be comfortable. I don't want a sticker on me, you know? 
like having your face painted at the fall festival. It's fine while you're there. When you come home, you want to wash your damn face. So I didn't do the stickers. I didn't do the stickers. When we release him, which of course is going to have to be soon, I think I will cry. I think I will cry. Because maybe as close to being a parent as I'll ever get. Probably not. I guess being a parent to JoJo for 14 years has been more involved. But to have planted a garden and nurtured a garden and kept the predators away unsuccessfully a little bit uh, when the tachinid flies got them. To have fed them, cared for their chrysalises, only to let them go and realize that, yeah, I'll see their progeny again. Maybe I'll see their DNA passed on and something I see next year. But I'll never see this one again. That's a little sad. I have a kind of a melancholy streak. Thinking about never seeing this little fella again. I just want to kiss him, but I bet that would hurt his wings. I bet that would hurt his wings. I wonder what he thinks about. What his hopes and dreams are. Jacob says they don't have hopes and dreams. I bet he's dreaming about finding a beautiful mate. Making lots of friends in Mexico, fluttering around with them, the festival. He's got lots to look forward to, lots of pretty places to fly over on his way. Uh, remarkably, they can fly, if they catch the wind just right, I think they can fly 400 and something miles a day. It may be 280, but I think it's like 450. It is remarkable to me. Makes you a little envious of things that can fly, doesn't it? I would need a helicopter. So it's important habitat-wise, not only do we need more milkweed, obviously, that's where the eggs are laid, that's where uh, the caterpillars are born and feed. It's the only thing they eat, milkweed. Uh, some people would say, well, they just evolved poorly. Sort of like the panda bear with uh, bamboo. But in any event, we need more milkweed for the eggs and for the larvae. But the adults just need nectar. And they need it in the spring when they're on their way to Canada. And they need it now to get tanked up to make it to Mexico. So it's important that we have many flower species for them to sample. Uh, and get their energy. They don't eat milkweed. They can't eat plants. Uh, they can't eat... Well, they can't eat anything but nectar. So they need nectar. By the way, Jamie has just called me Mr. Milky Seed. That's what I'm going to go by when I start my start my new life as a spreader of the gospel of butterflies. Uh, I'm going to call myself Be by Milky Seed instead of Johnny Appleseed. I will say his uh, eclosion, that's what they call it when they come out, eclosing, is not nearly as traumatic as what I imagine a childbirth is. Now the caterpillar forming the pupa I thought was pretty stressful. You know, they wiggle around, it seems arduous. This was pretty peaceful. There was just a crack and out crawled this little butterfly. 
to see what was going on in the world around him. Remarkable. Well guys, I'm going to go for now because he is going to hang like this for hours. And I will let you know the update. Hopefully when we release him we'll be able to get that uh, on video as well. And if not we'll get one of his mates here. You can see I've got five, well four now since one of them just hatched chrysalises and then let's go take a look say hi Jojo Jojo is not impressed with insects the habitat is just full now of chrysalises I've got seven chrysalises and I have seven additional worms caterpillars excuse me uh, hanging in their jays getting ready to make their chrysalises. So we're gonna have lots of monarch butterflies to introduce into the migration stream. And you guys have been a great help cheering them on, saying prayers and sending good thoughts. So keep doing that and hopefully we'll have more updates as events unfold. This is Be By Milky Seed, signing off.